if I can do this. Um, Sorry, nope. I hit the wrong button. I was trying to give you okay. share permission. Nope. <laughs> ah, and now it won't like leave my screen. Hmm. It's saying share. There, there we go. Yay. Okay. So essentially, um, I love, everybody loves a good quote, right? But your habits are going to define your future. And that's, that's true for every single one of us. Um, I was talking to a, a, an older adolescent, but we're all guilty of doing this. And this, this adolescent girl has issues with her mom and they, they've got this like struggle going on. And she's like, well, you know, my mom is manipulative and she lies to me. And I was like, mm kind of know you do that to her too though and she's like but only her and right you kind of know where I'm going with this and I said okay but if you're doing that with her what you do kind of becomes who you are um so then you know you you can't just stop it rarely are we the kind of person who's just who we are in a little box and then everywhere else we really are somebody else um like, unless you're a sociopath, that's probably not you. So little pieces of us because of all of these things, right? It could be because of a trauma. Um, and in, in my field, really what we define a trauma as is anything that overwhelms your current resources. So I may get into a car accident and think, oh, that's no big deal. Thank God I'm alive. And I'm going to move forward. Somebody else might get into a little fender bender and they might not drive again because it was a traumatic experience. It's just something that overwhelms your resources. Um, childhood modeling. So in the example that I gave, um, you know, with the, the older adolescent and, you know, viewing a mom who um, gaslights and is manipulative and gets caught in lies and things like that. So modeling. Um, I've mentioned accidents. It doesn't have to be a car accident. It could be any kind of accident, abuse, um, our culture. So um, I don't know if you want to type in the chat or if you want to remain anonymous. Um, I was raised Catholic, so I can say this. Um, you've heard the, thing, the term Catholic guilt. That's part of the culture, right? Um, we feel guilty. We hold on to some of these things. So, um, but it's also our, our culture of moms working right? And, and working moms feel bad that they're thinking about their kids when they're at home. For me, it's, it's not a mommy thing. It's, I feel bad about leaving my dog <laughs> when I'm not working from home. Um, but um, it's, you're, you're, you're feeling guilty or you're feeling torn between a few things. That's also part of our culture and it's germane. Hard times. So um, uh, a lot of people over the last two years, their income has decreased. They had to shut their businesses. Um, they couldn't visit a family member and the family member passed away. They couldn't be there for, you know, fill in the blank. That's hard times. Uh, fluke choices. Things just happen and um, we beat ourselves up over it. Or there's obviously some behavioral health concerns. We want to make sure we include that. Um, symptoms of anxiety, depression, those are things that um, also can chronic pain that contribute to reasons why we may have to feel like we beat ourselves up. Um, over time, like I said, what you do becomes who you are. Um, this is when, when we don't address why we have to forgive ourselves and we just live with this constant berating this is what it looks like. It looks a lot like self-sabotage. Um, it looks a lot like procrastinating, overthinking, um, assuming, making assumptions. I'm not going to go into the whole, you know, what that means. Um, creating self-fulfilling prophecies. I'm not going to succeed at this. I'm not going to try this because um, I'm only going to fail. Um, removing positives for your life, from your life, sorry. Um, and what that looks like, we all have positive things in our life. If you are in this country, if you're breathing, there's something positive going on in your life. And um, when we have more opportunities than we can see because our filter is dirty from all of this stuff that we're not forgiving ourselves for, um, 
we avoid stuff. How many times has you or your loved one been asked to hang out with some people and you won't do it? Or there's a work opportunity. Um, I could have said no to this, but because believe it or not, um, for those who you who know me, I am an introvert. <laughs> I have trouble with public speaking. Um, I do things like this or like teaching or um, I try to help out in my church because it pushes me to not avoid, to not um, get into that self-protecting mode. Um, there's that force field that we put up in that self-protecting mode, um, keeping people at arm's length or being kind of a control freak. Um, and again, I don't mean that in a, um, a clinical way. It's just there are patterns of behavior when we feel like we have to protect ourselves from doing something wrong or we're going to miss out on opportunities. These are how these things manifest. The other ways um, is lowering your self-worth. So again, it's a different kind of self-sabotage. So overindulging, um, being a self-critic. Uh, when is the last time that somebody said, oh gosh, um, Sally, you look so beautiful today. And you thought, yeah, I do look beautiful today. I am rocking this outfit, right? Most women, and if there's a fella on here, I didn't see a fella name, but um, most of them, most of us will say like, oh, like this old thing or, oh God, yeah, I, I just pulled it out or of my closet or I can't fit into what I really wanted to wear. There's this constant dialogue in your head that goes through. So it's kind of lowering your self-worth. The other part of self-sabotage, believe it or not, is perfectionism. People who always tell me they're perfectionists, I go right back up to that first part that says procrastinating. That's just a way to not get things done, um, to miss out, to lower all of that good work that you're doing and, um, and its effectiveness. So I wanted, if we're going to talk about why we have to forgive ourselves and how we do it, we have to understand how it happens and what it looks like. So we're gonna go through that a little bit more. Um, so um, there's a lot of people in the field who will talk about not only um, self-improvement, but um, how to kind of move through it. And all of these people that I'm going to be referencing, Heidi Powell's one of them, I'm going to reference a, a, another person here a little bit later on, um, is they've overcome some really big things that have affected a lot of people in their lives and, and their careers. Um, so pay attention to the names. You can write them down, Google them a little bit later on. But Heidi Powell um, is an amazing um, coach and public speaker. And... Um, you know, she talks about this hidden path and um, the way I'm going to translate it for you is if there are coffee drinkers in here, like I'm not going to make you raise your hand, but um, everybody gets the concept of making a pot of coffee. Um, every time you make a pot of coffee, you take out the old filter. Uh, obviously, hopefully it's clean when you start, but you take out the old filter, you, you put in a new filter put the coffee in, brew your pot, and then throw the filter out again. How gross would it be, I've had this experience, if you left the filter in there? Most people have to throw their coffee pot out. I want you to use that example of that gross, nasty, probably moldy filter with the crusty, <laughs> like actual filter in it um, as you not forgiving yourself day after day day after day. And that's the filter. That's the path that you've been on or that your loved one has been on. And you have to take it and throw it away and start with a fresh filter. I don't care if you have to do that hourly or daily. And sometimes you have to do it by the minute. Because if not, what your moldy, crusty coffee and coffee filter and coffee pot looks like is all or nothing thinking. It's always going to be this way. If, if it can't be, you know, if I can't do this, then I'm never going to do it. I'm never going to try. And I see people in all air, in my business, in my work, in my office, 
who do this. Um, overgeneralizing. So that's when you hear, oh, everybody thinks that way. Um, if you didn't hear some of this, uh, some of these statements during the pandemic, I, first of all, I want to hang out with you because I don't know where you've been because that's amazing. But the overgeneralizing that happened with um, what we've been through these last two plus years has been very traumatic for everybody, both to listen to and to experience. Um, discounting the positive and dwelling the negative, right? Those are two different sides of the same coin. Um, I liken this to Debbie Downer. Um, I didn't, I didn't want to put in any videos here because I wasn't sure of the technology, but if you, <laughs> if you haven't watched Saturday Night Live with a Debbie Downer skit, please Google it, go on YouTube, watch it. These are the people who, um, it doesn't matter how many nice things are going on, they'll say, um, they'll say something negative and you hear the little wah, wah in the background. Um, I actually have a girlfriend who's like this and, and I love her, but she's exhausting. And um, it doesn't matter if it's raining out or if it's sunny out, if it's raining out, oh, this weather, it's, you know, it's just, I'm so tired of these clouds and I can't wait until spring. And then spring comes and it's like, oh, it's so hot. How did it get so hot? Or it's my, like, it's always something. This is the thought process that, that's going on. Um, shoulds. One of my favorite things to tell people is stop shooting all over yourself. Um, guys, shoulds, oughts, and musts are, are like, they kill your spirit. I sh should have done that. I should have done this. I, I, I know I, I should have um, spent the time over my lunch break, you know, doing my paperwork or going for a walk, or I should have meal prepped on Sunday, but I just didn't have, you have to stop doing that. Again, just make those little mental footnotes of if this is you, pay attention to that. Um, fortune telling. <sighs> I know um, Teresa didn't invite me to, to her pampered chef party because um, she knows that um, I, I, I work for this company and she just doesn't want me to outshine her or um, he didn't ask me out because he thinks I'm stupid or I, I, he doesn't like how heavy I am right now or um, the mind reading. Um, that's an, another example of like how you kind of project your own worries into other people's heads. Be very careful of that. They probably didn't want to hang out with me anyway because, you know, they didn't invite me to go out shopping with them. Um, personalizing and catastrophizing. I mean, I'm not going to go through all of these, but um, I want you to just, again, really pay attention to whatever moldy gross filter you're seeing the world through because you're hanging on to all of this stuff. Um, this woman, Amberly Lago, if you don't know her story, um, my gosh, she is very, very powerful in terms of her story. And her, her quote, true resilience is finding the courage to move forward and choosing to live a life filled with laughter and love, right? She's not talking about all of a sudden rainbows and sprinkles flying out of your orifices. Um, she's the author of True Grit and Grace. She got into a huge accident and the doctors told her there was 1% chance that she was going to have her legs saved. Google her. She can walk. She looks great. She takes care of herself, but she experiences chronic pain. Um, and she almost, she lost her career. She had to shift and got into a lot of trouble financially because she didn't know what to do. So again, you see words like finding courage to move forward. I want you to, once you start paying attention to how this manifests in your life, how this manifests in your, in your loved one's lives, um, pay attention to it. And then it's going to take a lot of courage to move forward. And you see the word choice, because that's where we're going next. You have to choose to change. Um, so I'm a big fan of her pacer model. And we're going to talk like this, um, talk about this. 
The number one thing I talk to people about, because you hear it over and over again, the crap you tell yourselves, guys, that we tell ourselves, I wouldn't dream of saying it to anybody I love. Um, I see some people, you know, in the, in the, that are watching. Um, I would never say some of the th things I say to myself, to other people. It would be so discouraging. <laughs> um, I, I just wouldn't say it. Why would you even bother doing that? They're going to say no to you anyway. Why, why would they follow you on Facebook? You're boring. You don't have anything to say. Um, why would they hire you? You, you can't do that. You're not going to do it right. Why would they pick you to stay as a therapist? You're not the best therapist in town. There's all different kinds of things that we can really say to ourselves that are going to ruin opportunities. So think to yourself, would you ever talk to somebody like that? Would you talk to your kids like that? Would you talk to your dog like that? I wouldn't. So let's take a look at how to kind of um, decide to move forward and then move forward. So P is perspective, right? We've been talking about that. You have the power and the choice. Um, I don't care if um, you've never taken an opportunity to choose differently. Believe it or not, once you realize that you're responsible for the things that are going on in your life, that's a scary thing because that gives you power and choice. Um, a lot of people take on this victim mentality. And I'm not talking about true victims. Like I'm not saying it's, I'm not victim shaming. Like if you were robbed, it was your fault that the burglar decided to choose your home. It's not what I'm saying. But from today forward, where you're at, you have the power over your choices. And the first thing you have to do is choose to decide, I am going to forgive myself really that it's that simple because no therapist in the world, no best friend in the world, no seminar in the world is going to make an impact until you say, okay, Jennifer, that's it. Like I'm not going to live in a world where I'm choosing to beat myself up over and over and over again. You have the power to choose to transform your life. And um, again, when they talk about worldview, one of the things, and this is going to sound a little authoritarian, but I'm going to say it anyway, in my therapy room, in my house, and even in my friend group, I don't allow people to get away with the, it is what it is mentality. I don't know how that got to be so popular, but guys, it is what it is. It's like a death sentence for your spirit. It's not what it is. A thousand percent, it's going to be what you make it. I don't care what we're talking about. And you can, if you want to Facebook friend request me and challenge me in a private message, I, I will debate that until my dying breath. Because anytime somebody says it is what it is, it means, and if you say this yourself, it means that you've totally given up. Absolutely. But if you say it's going to be what I make it, this whole pandemic, my husband and I made a choice and we lived a certain way. And as tough as it got, or as weird as it got, or as scary as it got, because we made a decision to live a particular way, we were in control of our responses to everything we saw in the last, I'd even say five years or so. Um, so the quickest way to shift your perspective is gratitude. And again, focus on the positives, not Pollyanna, you know, Pollyanna is the opposite of Debbie Danner, but you have to hunt for the good. So what you focus on expands. When I started focusing on, um, or any one of these authors that I'm going to talk about or have been talking about, when we decide to focus on gratitude and what we're thankful for, um, it expands, meaning you see it more. So it's like when you buy that white Ford Fusion, you start seeing, wow, there's a lot of fusions on the road. And there's a lot of white cars on the road because you're, it's called to your attention. So um, Amberly talks about gratitude as being alchemy. Like it turns what you don't have or what you can't do into what you do have and what you can do. And it's not that toxic positivity, right? So maybe she's not going to become a marathon runner, but 
you know, she's walking. I saw her dance on a stage. And this is someone whose leg was so mangled that, you know, she had to fight for years to get that back. Um, so if we decide to write down things that we're grateful for about ourselves, that it, or about our situation or about what we're doing every day, that helps with self-forgiveness. The next thing is acceptance. So um, if you got into trouble and you, um, let's say you committed a felony and now you're having a hard time getting a job because um, you made this mistake back in your early 20s and now you're in your 40s, that's something you're going to have to accept. And once you get beyond that, there's freedom with that because then you can kind of move forward. And the best version of yourself, again, I don't know if any of us are going to win any, any um, national congressional medals of honor or, um, you know, win the Olympics or whatever it is, employee of the year. But you have to recognize that whatever you're going to do in your future, whatever your dreams are, you're going to have to accept what you've been through and where you're at right now and then move forward where you're at with your present. I really hate this example because I think people beat it with a dead horse, but you cannot drive your vehicle by looking either in your rear view mirror or driving like this. It's not going to happen. You're going to get into an accident. And that's what it's like when we self-sabotage and we don't forgive ourselves. We keep running into the same crap and we don't we, we can't even drive because we're, you know, running into a curb or banging into a tree or that, you know, we're constantly stop starting. Um, so you have to be able to give yourself a chance to thrive and live your best life possible. Um, and that's the start. So you can continually evolve. Um, there's a lot of turnover in my profession. And probably if you're in healthcare, a lot of you turnover in your professions. So patients get really tired of starting over. And what I try to explain to people is that you're starting where you're at today. You and I are gonna go here today, moving forward. We don't have to revisit the 20,000 things that happened yesterday and the day before and the year before that and the decade before that. So accepting where you're at today. Um, okay, the community, again, you're never alone. We are hardwired to connect. There are all these people in this group here today. You have to, you have to have humans in your life. Even those of us who like don't people well, or we get tired of like being pulled in the wrong direction, or our brains are sapped because of our professions or whatnot. When we share our story, we build these deep, meaningful connections. When we get get over ourselves and we get over our shame. Um, we have a community of people that um, we can connect with. And we may have to guard that if we're not making the best choices. But that's why I say this also includes your relationship with God. And there's a sense of spirituality that um, when understood the right way, there's um, a fellowship of either like-minded believers or like-minded people um, any kind of community that you ha that you can make that says, yeah, I've been through it, but I want to move forward with my life. There's always those people out there, believe it or not, because I found it at my age, I'm 46. So, um, and just in the last few years, but you have to do it with a sense of intentionality. Everything I talked about today so far, and we'll talk about you have to be intentional about, you have to do it on purpose. And that starts with deciding. So you have to decide and you have to do it on purpose with all of these things. Um, endurance, right? She talks about passion and perseverance and that, that equals grit. So when you think of those gritty people, you know, those people who kind of move forward and they just seem to have this unlimited resource of, um, stick to itiveness, right? Um, this like this builds up that emotional stamina, guys. It doesn't happen overnight. No more than you lose weight overnight, or you can run a 5K overnight. 
working on forgiving yourself and being mindful of how you talk to yourself, it's waking up every doggone day and deciding and being intentional. This is not magical. So like, if you thought you'd find like the secret sauce to like, Jen's going to tell me finally how I forgive myself and I get to wake up tomorrow and do what Jen told me to do. Um, it's not, it's, it's not, there's no magic pill for any good thing. I will tell you the right decision is often the hard decision. So go at it every doggone day and you will build up endurance. Um, I studied the martial arts with um, some local people in Freeport for years. And, um, and we, uh, my partners were always dudes, except for um, the woman who taught me. And they were huge. And I used to walk around with these bruises all over because they were just, you know, they kind of manhandle me because I'm smaller than they are. But what I noticed over time is even though the techniques were getting harder and we were getting a little bit rougher, I stopped bruising. And I understood like, holy crap, that's what they meant by developing a thick skin. I didn't bruise anymore. So emotionally, developing a thick skin doesn't mean that you're going to be hardened. It just means you're going to be resilient. So kind of keep that in your mind while you're working through this. And then of course, rest, right? We talk about go, 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 going. This is, this is where you give yourself a little grace and you can recover because this is work. Um, you have to learn. And, and I'm, I always hate talking about this, but it's true. Like you have to learn to love and accept yourself and not in a weird way. Like you're not going to Stuart Smalley yourself into a mirror, although you can, you do have to talk to yourself in a way that you're listening to your body. Um, this is like burnout. You have to listen to your heart. What do I really want? What do I really expect for myself? What am I doing? Why, why do I wait to the last minute and then ruin things for myself? Why did I say that? Why did I eat that? Like what, what's going on with myself? And you have to be open-minded to different methods um, of rest and challenging yourself when you're um, being challenged or if you're in too much pain. And this could be physical pain or psychological pain or um, relational pain. Um, so open-minded, I went for years and I, I didn't journal and I hate, I, I still hate journaling. I hate it. I rarely tell my patients to do it. I'll mention it, but I'm kind of like, I don't like doing it, but y'all it works. Um, so be open-minded to that. So just again, think about addressing your danger zones. If you need therapy, please go into therapy, decide and choose to move forward, um, and again, really quickly, this is going to take 30 seconds, shift your identity, imagine who you want to be, write it down, be specific, accept that, you know, it's not going to be easy, draw some boundaries, establish healthy boundaries with yourself and others. Um, if you've not read the book, Atomic Habits, do it. Um, if you are kind of a sabotager, I recommend uh, I'm going to show you this book. It's probably backwards. It's the Self-Sabotage Behavior Workbook. You can get it on Amazon, really cheap. Um, Dr. Seti, S-E-T-I. She is um, real. She's the real deal, and it's real concrete. But make a commitment to yourself. Have your loved one make a commitment. Be consistent and release all that stuff. Um, release your expectations. Accept that this is going to be difficult and move forward. Um, the last thing I want to, you know, like leave with you guys is as you're changing, because I believe you guys can change. Um, I changed. Not everybody's going to be in your corner, guys. People don't like change. They don't like that you're putting boundaries on them. You're going to hear like, oh, you think you're, she thinks she's too good for us. Or, um, you know, now that she's friends with Dana, man, she's making all these changes and, you know, they're running marathons together and she just thinks she's better than us. She doesn't want to go get ice cream every Saturday now, you know, whatever. Um, people will get persnickety because you're moving forward in your life. That's all right. Maybe they'll come. Maybe you have to leave them behind. 
you just have to, you know, keep that your, your circle, keep your filter clean. It's going to be really important. And finally, I wanted to leave you with that. That's my peaceful place. This is my, this is my spot. Don't take yourself too seriously. Um, I was raised in Jersey with no pets. That's why this is a big deal. Um, just find your spot, whatever that means, and um, do some work on yourself. It'll be worth it. So Dana. Jennifer, thank you so much. I took so many notes. I, <laughs> I, I can't, this day has just been so, I, I've loved every single session. This was, I'm amazing. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yes. Um, I do have a little poll if you guys would fill this out for me, please. And then, um, and I love journaling. I just fell in love with journaling. I've never done it before, but I love it. It's been life-changing for me. It really has. When you it said you so didn't great. like it, I'm like, oh my goodness. I, I know. But it's I not know. for everybody. You're right. It's not. not. Somebody, somebody might find something different. You know, I'm going to say it probably is for everybody, but we have to like, that's why I had to get over myself <laughs> and I, I prayer journal. So like it's, it just helps me kind of get over myself and get out of my head. Um, it's helpful. It is for everybody, but like, it doesn't mean that it's enjoyable or it's intuitive or it's our favorite thing to do. Right. But it has been life-changing for me. So yes. Yeah. Amen. Yep. Well, thank you very much. And thank, thank you guys all for um, participating today. Thanks guys.